Now, another way we can add bibliographic metadata into Mendeley that may be helpful is that we can use catalog ID numbers. So to look at that, let's go up to this arrow and we can click on add entry manually. When we click on add entry manually, you'll notice that it says catalog IDs and you're going to see archive ID, DOI, and PMID. Now, these may be beneficial for uploading metadata. Let's start, for example, with the PMID. Now the PMID is a PubMed indexing number. So PubMed is a cataloging system for biomedical literature and life science literature. And each one of those has a specific ID. So let me show you. I'm gonna to go to the University of Georgia library system and I'm gonna search for the PubMed database. Okay, now if we do a search, let's say we're working for a lab that's using fMRIs in the study of music. So you notice here that the entries come up and for each entry there's a PMID number. What we can do is we can copy this PMID number, paste it in here and click the search function. Now that's automatically going to go into the PubMed database and search for the article and you'll see here we have the article that came up. Now that may be beneficial. If we cancel out of here and we click here and we click on the import to Mendeley button, let's see what comes up here. So you notice that the articles do come up here with the import to Mendeley feature. So the question becomes, well, why would we use the PMID? In this particular instance, it wouldn't necessarily be beneficial. We can just click on uh, import to Mendeley, click on any of the buttons, and then save all into, I would put it into the new bibliography because we're not importing PDFs here. So why would we use that? Well, first we should say that the Mendeley feature is working and picking up the bibliographic data from this particular website. I can tell you that sometimes that doesn't always happen. You may click on import to Mendeley and no bibliographic data will pull up, even though the website may look very similar to what we're looking at right now. As another example, let's think of this scenario. Let's say for an example, you're working within a lab and your lab director says, I want you to put these particular citations into our database. So they might hand you a PDF and they might just highlight the particular ones that they want into the system. So you're not necessarily sure um, maybe specifically how they searched these or where these came from, but they just come to you and they say, hey, can you put these into our database? So in that particular instance, what we can do is just take that piece of paper, go into the new entry, go to the PMID and take a look at the first one, 2781437979. And we can do the search function and we can save it. Now we can do another manual entry. Let's go to the next one. 2760912. We'll do a search for it. The entry comes up and we'll click save. And so that may be an instance where you can use these PMIDs to your advantage. Now the other catalog ID that you saw was DOI, and DOI stands for Digital Object Identifier. And now that a lot of journals have moved online, generally for at least the major journals in pretty much all of the fields, each journal has a DOI identifier. So let's look at another example. We'll close out of here, and let's go to the Public Library of Science, plus one. So let's do a search here maybe for music cognition and musical preference. So let's click on this first article. Musical preferences are linked to cognitive styles. So let's take a look down here at the references. You'll notice here that each of the references has a specific DOI number. Now once again what we can do is we can simply come up here and go to import to Mendeley and for PLOS1 now, you notice that here when we click on import to Mendeley, the particular article that we're looking at comes up. But also now, here are the related papers. So it actually takes all of the related information and puts it into related papers. So now we can just click on this and import the citations as well.
A lot of the open access journals, such as PLOS One in this example, Science Direct, Frontiers, they're getting really good now at making sure that each cataloged article has a DOI attached to it. That includes the references that are being used as well as the article itself. Now, in this particular instance, we clicked on Import to Mendeley and the article popped up as well as all of the related papers. In that instance, that's really great because we can just check on all of these and import it to Mendeley. However, in a lot of other database systems, that's not always going to be the case. You may pull up a bibliographic search and have 20 or 30 bibliographies sitting in front of you and click Import to Mendeley and none of the bibliographies will be able to be picked up by Mendeley. In other instances, you may be looking at a list of 20 or 30 bibliographies, click Import to Mendeley, and maybe only two are caught by Mendeley. So this guarantees now at least that you have another option of grabbing some of these catalog IDs and using them within the Mendeley system to import the references. Now you'll also notice with the references here in PLOS One, you'll see that it has the DOI numbers. So as an example, let's take a look at this DOI. Let's highlight this DOI and see if it works. Okay, and it looked it up and the article works as well. Now we'll also notice here that it has the PubMed ID as well. So we can click on the PubMed ID. Here's that PubMed ID. We can copy this, put it into our Mendeley system. And it comes in that way as well. So depending on the specific method of how you want to import it, it gives you several options. You can use the PubMed ID, you can use the DOI, you can use import to Mendeley. Also the third ID that you can use is the archive ID. Now an archive ID is a particular ID that's used often in the fields of math or computer science, statistics, um, some of the harder sciences. And so it's the same type of function as the PMID, only it's used for different fields in different databases. So let's move this over for a second. Now let's say for an example, you're taking a look at this article and this is very interesting to you and you want to start importing some of these citations that you can look at. Maybe you're starting a daisy chain. But in this case, let's say hypothetically that the import to Mendeley function doesn't necessarily work very well and it's not able to pick up the bibliographic data that's listed here in the references. So let's see exactly how we can do that. So the first one is a book. So the way I would do the book is I would probably just copy the book. I would go up to add manual entry. I would click title and I would save it. Now what we can do is go into this feature here. Now we can click on view research catalog entry for this paper. So what that's going to do, it's going to bring up a tab now within our cloud system and we'll see here that the music culture and experience book came up. Now we can click on save reference to library. So now if we come here and click sync, we'll notice that that book is there. Now the next thing we can look, take a look at here is one of the articles. We could either plug in the DOI or we could go to the PubMed. Let's go to the DOI, search for it, and here it comes, and we'll save that. So let's go down a little bit more. What else do we see? Okay, so here we see a section of a book. So let's take a look at this. We'll put this in the title, see what happens. We'll save it, and we'll search for it in a catalog. Okay, that came up as well, so we'll save it to the reference library. We'll sync up this to our cloud service. We'll delete this. We can delete this now. And now we have the journal article in there as well. So there are lots of ways to doing it. And this just provides a lot of flexibility and a lot of options to how we can best and most efficiently import some of the citations or PDFs into our Mendeley system. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. If you did, make sure to give us a big thumbs up and like the video. If you haven't done so already, be sure to subscribe to our channel by clicking the link above and make sure to check out some of our other videos. We'll see you again soon.